Podcast. My name is Andy Spateri, joined as always by Dakota Lasky. Dak, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good, my man. I'm doing pretty good. Um, the countdown to my second vaccine dose has hit the, the seven days or less mark. I'm getting my second dose this coming Saturday, so I will have my full 5G upgrade all ready to go just before my birthday at the end of the month. So yeah, I'm pretty pumped about that. And I also have on the exact same day going to be competing in the Northeast qualifiers for the Smash World Tour. So I'm hoping that my my ailments from the second dose of the vaccine propel me to new heights that I've never seen before in competition. I hope it pushes my body <laughs> to the brink of survival, to the edge, forcing me to play good forcing me to play well, forcing me to get top eight or something like that. But yeah, um, not too much. Otherwise, it's been a pretty chill day and, uh, you know, dealing with allergies as usual, hoping for some rain maybe. And I also learned that I will be going, to, well, I didn't just learn, but I'm going to a friend's wedding uh, pretty soon at the end of July, which I've known about for a while. Um <clears throat> Though I guess like they didn't like confirm the dates really until recently, and we just put it together that their wedding is the exact same wedding or the exact same weekend that the lease for my apartment ends. <laughs> so I have to figure out what I'm doing with that. But yeah, should be fun. Are you, are you staying or are you going? Oh, we're going. So that's that's gonna oh, be nice. the tricky part. Um, nice. Because we're not gonna be here while the lease ends. I'm not sure how we're gonna do it, but. We're going to make it work. We're going to make it happen. I think we're going to be moving to New Jersey. Some cheaper rent there. Uh, better apartment, maybe. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. we still got a couple months in this lease. But yeah, anyway. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, not too much. How you doing, man? I know. I'm, I'm not doing too bad. I can't complain. It's like stupidly hot up here for the first time all year. Um, and it's like like muggy hot you know what i'm saying like it's not even mm -hmm. sunny it's just kind of muggy so it's uh uh it's been a thing my dog is getting used to like warm weather so he's he's been loving laying outside but he he also isn't used to the heat so he's like lapping up water like nobody's business so <laughs> been kind of spraying him with the hose and whatever and it also sucks because we've got to do some yard work but right. it's so hot so but i mean i guess i can't complain about hot weather we only get that for like a very very limited time here in calgary yeah. alberta canada so you, you kind of got to take it you know, while you can get it. But I spent a lot, uh, not a lot. I spent like about four hours, five hours yesterday in my nice basement, which is nice and cool. And I finally got to sit down and play uh, some PS4. And I can't wait to talk about the game that I've been playing. It's very, very awesome. I have a lot of, of you know, I just, I, I can't wait to talk about it. I'll just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, you mentioned something earlier that I'm sure that you can't wait to talk about. And I can't wait to talk about today. Um, and that is Super Smash Bros. We yeah. we are, of course, we are on the march to E3. We are, God, a month away. Uh, not even. We're, we're not even a month away from E3. We don't know exactly which day yet Nintendo is going to be presenting. But that's definitely the, the showcase that I'm most excited for. I'm excited for the Microsoft one, too. But Nintendo is, uh, is exciting to me, you know, because I'm a Nintendo homer. But also because I think it's pretty much a guarantee that we will see at least one new Smash Bros. character revealed uh, during that E3 presentation. So today we are going to revisit, or actually I am going to revisit, and uh, and you're going to get to talk about for the first time, Metroid and Super Smash Bros. And, and all that fun stuff. Dak, when we first did this episode, I, I think you were, you were away, you were at like a... I don't know, a wedding or something like that, or maybe a bachelor party or something. Maybe the bachelor party for this wedding. I'm not sure. I think but so. I think that was it. Yeah. That makes sense. That lines up. Um, but so, so today we're going to talk about some, some like characters that exist in, in smash, like dark Samus and stuff and, and other characters, what we think their, 
their movesets should be, some cool stages that, you know, we would like to see in the games. Uh, Rod and I, a couple months ago, we, we really just uh, summarized what is already in Smash, but today we want to talk about what could be in Smash, and then we'll talk about, you know, just, we'll, we'll just kind of spitball some ideas about who we think those last two characters could be in the Smash Fight Pack. But, Dak, since you didn't really, um, you weren't here for the last episode, I guess I just wanted to open it up and say, like, we did we did spend a lot of time reacting to, you know, some of the events that had happened over the years in Smash, and I know that you have some thoughts, reactions, memories, so I just wanted to open it up and see, for you, kind of what, what the high points, and maybe low points if you have any, but definitely the high points of Metroid's history in the Super Smash Bros. series were. Um, I mean, I would definitely say that the, the, well, the highest point has to be when Ridley got into Smash, right? I mean, like, that has to be mm-hmm. the biggest one, right? So, I remember the presentation watching it. I was watching it in my office for work, or, you know, at my job. And my friend, my roommate at the time also worked there. And he had another office. And we were watching in his office. We're popping off. And people were like, what's going on in there? And, like everyone at the office obviously like we're the only people watching e3 or whatever it was at the time and you kind of like had the feeling that it was going to be ridley based on like how the trailer was starting but man like just the pop-off was crazy i think like the the clip is on my twitch channel um and i remember like my phone like freezing and locking up when it happened because so many people were tweeting at me about <laughs> it because i've been watching ridley for years like it was the most exciting thing i never wanted a character in a game more finally got it that has to be the highest point, and it looks so cool. Like they made it look so awesome. Uh, obviously, like Dark Samus being included at the same time was also really cool. I mean, that has to probably be the biggest one in terms of like high points. Probably low points. I think low point for me is when he didn't get into Smash Four because I remember there was a a player from i think it was someone from japan who got a a copy of the game like there was obviously like the esrb leak and whatnot that happened beforehand but none of the leaks were like confirmed to be true entirely until the game actually really came out like there was no real like knowing who was going to really be in the game until it came out and i remember someone streaming from japan i think got the game like a day or two before it released here in the states and it was like watching this guy's stream at like three or four in the morning as they were unlocking characters. I'm like, come on, Ridley, like, please show up, please show up. Just like, you know, they're playing like the 3DS version or something. Uh, we're like the least likely place for him to show up because he's too big. And he unlocks like Duck Hunt Dog. And then he like, I think the last character he unlocked was like Rob. And that's how I was like, oh my God, like that was the most anticlimactic thing in my life. And I had to wait like so many more years until I finally got Ridley in the game. But yeah, Ridley was on both sides of the coin right there. Highest and lowest points for me for Smash, at least. Uh, a low point about Ridley in Smash 4, too, is the Pyrosphere stage where you fight Ridley. Oh, but my God. It's like yeah. it's other M Ridley. And... and that led to a lot of speculation, too, because they didn't show it off in- immediately, right? Like, they showed the stage and they showed, like, a shadow there. And they're like, they, yeah, yeah. they toyed with us. Like, it was so mean. Like, they screwed with us and, like, oh, what's like, it's. They knew that we knew it was Ridley, but they wouldn't, like, show us exactly what Ridley was doing there. And I remember like a lot of the speculation, like people were like measuring the size of the shadow based on Pikachu's shadow size to determine whether or not Ridley would even be like a big enough fighter or whether or not he was obviously a stage hazard. And I was definitely inhaling the copium back then. Cause I just, you know, didn't want to believe any evidence to the contrary Ridley being in smash, but I'm, I'm very honestly, I think it worked out for the best because if we had gotten, Ridley then we probably would have gotten other M Ridley as playable and I just hate how he looks so I'm glad we got this way cooler looking Ridley so I think it ended up working out for the best yeah I uh I agree with you about that one I was I was very disappointed and I remember thinking like in Brawl so I wanted Ridley as a playable character in Melee because at that point oh, yeah, I, I knew who Samus was and, and everything in that cool opening cinematic and I remember getting to Brawl and Ridley wasn't playable but it was like it was kind of like a softer blow because you got to fight Ridley twice in, in like the boss mode. And like the, the meta Ridley fight was really cool. The regular Ridley fight was really cool. So it didn't seem like as big of a disappointment, but I, I remember in smash four, I was just like, Oh my God. Yeah. What is this like purple duck that I'm fighting in, in the pyrosphere? But yeah, I'm, I'm with you, man. That was like, that was my highlight for Metro. It's gotta be Ridley, right? Like 
not only did our boy finally get into Smash after like 15 years at that point, or maybe even longer, because it was 19 or it was 2018 when that E3 happened, but Ridley literally main evented Nintendo's E3 that year. Like that was the main event of Nintendo's presentation and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and the main event of that trailer was Ridley getting into Smash. I thought that was so cool. And you walk like for he murdered Mario, he murdered Mega Man, and when Samus walked out and she was in the center, I was just like, I don't want to believe it because I've I can't believe it anymore. But oh man, that was so that was so awesome. And actually, I I thought that the uh, I thought that their E three was actually fairly lackluster. Other than that, but I remember that Ridley announcement, man. Whew, that was awesome. Yeah. Um. That was like I think the the pop off was probably the biggest pop I've had for any character, and that was it was crazy that they they put him on like full stage front and center the last big moment of the presentation and because they knew it was like the big thing right like that's what everyone was like kind of waiting for and also like it was all like following up on like everyone is here everyone's coming back which was leaked previously to E3, but I like that was such a huge presentation. Like for Ridley to be part of that, like that was so cool. Um, that whole presentation was sick. Like, I couldn't believe that they were bringing like Snake back and and all these other characters, like Pokemon Trainer, Foley, Wolf, uh, absolutely awesome. And yeah, but Ridley topped it off for sure. Yeah, that was just an absolutely uh, unbelievable moment. That that was one of those moments as Metroid fans, we were just like, I feel like we've turned a corner, maybe. We didn't really build on that. Uh, nothing really came of that other than obviously like Ridley just being in Smash. But that you, in that moment, I remember feeling feeling hope for the first time in a it long time. It felt good because we had... Uh, as a Metroid fan. So yeah, I was uh, I was pretty excited. And, yeah. and to put it into comparison, main event of E3 2018 was Ridley. Main event of E3 2019 was like Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. So like that's a pretty big deal, that oh, yeah. spot to be in. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it was... 2018 was good. Yeah, we had obviously Ultimate Ridley showing up, Dark Samus in there, and then, um, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess it was just Ridley. I guess no, because Samus Returns had already that was already out by then. I guess it was just so awesome just to have Ridley and in, in, like Metroid in general represented in Smash, like to that extent at the time. Mm-hmm. That just felt like a lot more than I was like, oh yeah, actually Samus Returns was already out at that time. And Metroid Prime Four had already been revealed at that time. It was just you know really the Metroid representation in Smash, as far as I remember. And that was just really hype on its own. Like, that was just um, bringing back, like, older stages, like, you know, friggin' Orphean and other ones, like, um, you know, like, uh, the Brinstar and, like, crate stages and whatnot. Like, those, th- like, that's awesome. Like, there's so much good, re- like, Ultimate is 100% the best representation, I think, for, in ter- for Metroid in the series. And even though, like, oh, yeah. you know, we could go on how, like, and we- I'm sure we will soon, on, like, how the move sets are represented, because... That's another story, but I'm just happy that Ridley's in the game. You know, I knew that like Ridley being added to Smash, he wasn't going to be a top tier character, and Dark Samus too. But Dark Samus is pretty good, though. You might as well just play Samus. But Ridley, I, I'm just happy that he's in the game. It was such a huge thing for me, the character I wanted the most. I was so happy that he was in the game. I really popped off, and like it was a character I sincerely wanted, and that's why I still love playing him to this day. I still play him. Because, like, I genuinely like playing as him, and I like his play style, but, like, it's fun to play a character you like in a, in a game like Smash. So, um, I just really couldn't believe he actually got put into Smash, and I can I can die happy, you know? <laughs> that was It was a long journey, and I'm, I'm glad that it, it, it was successful and that's over. Uh, yeah, definitely the high point in, in Metroid. But I also agree. I thought that it was pretty cool that Dark Samus got into, and, like... I know that there were some people that were disappointed that she was an Echo Fighter, but I think that the, you know, when you when you look at it as the alternative is, like, that character doesn't exist at all versus mm-hmm. being an Echo Fighter, I, I think I'll take the Echo Fighter over, like, that just being kind of another alternate costume like Dark Samus basically was in Smash 4. Um, but I did I did want to go ahead and just kind of, because we have, we have fun with this. We've had fun with this on the, in the Zelda side for years, pitching, like, original moves for Ganondorf and stuff like that. So I did want to pitch to you some moves that that I thought would be key, would be kind of cool for Dark Samus and like we can we can go back and forth if you want but uh, and and obviously you know way more about Smash than I ever do but I don't know I I always kind of have fun with this and and just being like okay like all these Metroid characters or all these characters I like like what would their moves be in Smash Bros like how would you kind of 
you know, how would you get the recovery move or how would you do their final smash or stuff like that? Uh, so, can we fix Ridley um, I, first? Ridley is needs. Oh yeah, we can God. start with Ridley. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm interested on your thoughts. Like, how do, what do you think about just as a Metroid fan? You, uh, you played like from your perspective, either playing as Ridley or playing against Ridley and ultimate or both. What is your impression of like the translation of Ridley from Metroid to smash? Like, how do you think, like, what do you think of his, like, how they captured him, his depiction in the Smash games. Is it accurate? Okay. Or like, what do you think? Well, so so it's important to know too that I like I'm not I'm not a competitive Smash guy at all. Like I, I'm I'm horrible at Smash. So like to me, I'm just like this is cool. Ridley does this in the game. So I think for the most part, it's pretty decent because like his side B is that grinding move, which you know he does in other M and he does in Sam's Returns, and I'm like that's pretty cool. His neutral B is just spitting out some fireballs. And I'm like, okay, he does that in Super Metroid. That's pretty cool. Um, his up B, I think, is just kind of like a, a generic charge up, right? Like just a, just a big whoosh and he goes up. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, you can you can pick four directions, right? He has like the, the upward motion, the forward motion, downward, forward, and then up back. Right. So it's like a, it's kind of a bad fox up B, so to speak. So I, I think that that's pretty cool. Uh, the one that you know is the is the big missed opportunity is down B because like I mean, we we all know that that should be the pogo attack, right? And like you should just be able to get up in the air, down B, um, and just literally bounce, 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 and it that should that that's such like an obvious Ridley attack to me. Like he does it in every single two D Metroid game. That's such a classic attack. That that is the one to me that feels like a missed opportunity because his down B move in the game, where he like stuns you with his tail, uh, feels a little bit weird and a little bit off to me. Um, I think his final smash is kind of cool. Like, I I mean whatever. It's not it's not like he blasts Samus into the into her ship in the game, but I I think final smashes can be. Uh, exaggerated just a little bit and I, i'm okay with that it's the down b and not having the pogo with ridley that's really uh the, the crime for me what what say you i mean honestly I, I that's what everybody says i really don't know how they would wor- make the pogo move work really well because i just can't see how it would be good like he's such a big hitbox it would be so easy to hit him if you just like it would essentially like how would it work would it give him extra jumps and it's like a float. I, like, like, I don't even think that you have to necessarily have it like as a pogo, but it could even be like Bowser's down B, where it's just like a slam, and like that could. Th- yeah, but know. his down air is that already? You know, his down air, and yeah, I mean, I, guess I so. you know, I mean, I definitely get what you're saying. I've just always tried to figure out like how would they actually make the pogo work? So like maybe it would work like a float, where he gets like a special like floating animation, and he can float in an area and attack with his tail. I think that'd be really good, though, with, combined with his really bad airspeed. I think it would just leave him so vulnerable, and it wouldn't be as good as people would think it is. I honestly like Ridley's down B in Ultimate right now. Not as it is, but I like it as a like a move. I think it's really cool. It's satisfying. But the problem is, obviously, uh, it has no follow-ups. It's you know super laggy and whatnot. But the biggest issue with it is that it does nothing to shields, which is a huge issue because there are a lot of times where like, you can hit a shield... Or hit someone who just blocking in general, or like, may, it might not have hit them, but they shielded it, so maybe they power shielded or whatever, parried it. If it did more shield damage or something like that, and made it worth it, so like you could even break shields, then his down B, I think, would have way more utility, and I, I, I think it would be more satisfying than like a pogo. I don't, I honestly, as a Ridley player, never had any kind of, and a Ridley fan, have no like love not love necessarily but like i don't really care that if he has the pogo or not i don't think it would translate well to smash i think that's why they didn't do it i think his down air still lame though like his down air still doesn't make any sense i think that's the biggest issue with ridley is that he does he has so many like kicking moves like ridley doesn't kick and yet he's back airing he's kicking his down air is like a, a stomp his up smash is like a, a an overhead bicycle kick like a pele kick which is awesome mm-hmm. i think it's cool and those moves are good but it doesn't at all reflect how he actually plays or looks in, in Metroid. He never kicks anybody, you know? He's not running up to people and using his tail as a sword to stab people, which is what he does when he grab pummels you. Like, Ridley's depiction outside outside of his specials is very much not like how he is in Metroid. And it's more so, like, congruent with his, like, composite they've made in Smash, where he's, like, smaller, more compact, so he's not too big. But, like... 
he has high ground speed but really low air speed which is weird because in metroid games he has like no ground speed he has gr high ground acceleration but really no like high ground speed but he has high air speed and accelerate acceleration and smash is the opposite i wish he had more air speed if ridley had more air speed in smash oh my god he'd be so good more air acceleration but yeah it's weird his depiction in, in smash i like it it's cool it's unique but it's not at all uh like congruent or like uh, uh, like what, what he's like in the metroid games and, and i think that i mean that's really a a smash thing to do right like um i i think that by and large smash mostly focuses on like the special moves like the b moves um as, as kind of like an, an ode to mm -hmm. what a character does in the actual games uh maybe maybe less so now with like some of the newer characters obviously a lot of thought goes into those guys but i think traditionally like a lot of characters like their special moves are very reminiscent of what that character does in a game but you know it, at least to my untrained eye it seems like a lot of the other moves are just kind of like whatever like we need to give him uh, a side smash and an up smash and a down smash Let's just, you know, he's got a big, he's got a big leg for, for a dragon. Let's just use it to kick people. And yeah. I think like, like for me, like I'm, and, and I'm mostly okay with that. I I think it would be cool if he used his tail a little bit more because like, you know, when you're fighting Ridley in Super Metroid, his tail is just going absolutely insane and yeah. it's invulnerable and it's like this awesome, you know, force and it's his, it's his secret weapon. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it doesn't really translate over, but other than the pogo not being in smash i don't have a problem with that i mean like you're probably right like i don't know how that would that would go in smash or not and that probably is why they didn't do it but it is a, it is too bad that they didn't at least have it as like a down kind of spike move at least i no, i agree like it should be his down air that's what i think his down i mean his down b being a better move would be great i think it'd be good if they made it his down air so that way he had it's more of a disjointed move instead of like putting his body on the line with his legs and then it had like mm -hmm. a, a ground hitbox. So when he lands on the ground, it had like a shock wave or something like that, which is also like kind of like what Ridley does, you know. Uh, his down smash yeah. was a similar kind of effect. But that's because it's super disjointed because of his wings. They also have a hitbox, but he could use a lot of buffs. I would. There's so many things I would love to see. Like I wish he could uh, hold his plasma uh, um, plasma breath charge. You know, like imagine he could charge all of his fireballs and then just like have that ready and then use that at any time instead of just being stationary. That would be so mm. good. That would make him so good. So many things that could change, like maybe give him a little less lag on his side B, stuff like that. Maybe a kill throw would be nice. But he's so fun. I am, I'm glad he's in Smash and I have a lot of fun. Like I don't play characters, even if they're like good or not like obviously i respect tier lists and know they're they're a thing but like at the same time i play characters that i find are fun ridley specifically is a character i've wanted in smash for so long but i'm also happy that i enjoy his play style and like what he can do do you know do you know who my smash main is i don't know who i mean random i was oh okay i was gonna say like a zelda character or like pit or something i don't know you seem like a pit guy oh god no no <laughs> i i hate pit I, so back in my brawl days actually me and my buddy uh, we used to play fairly religiously and we had like, we had like a, a couple series of matches that we'd always do. I was always Marth. He was always Pit. I was always Lucas. He was always Ike. And like, we, we kind of battle it out that way. So those two, if anything would be my mains, but yeah, my main now is just going to random and just, you know, Bold. letting, letting what, what, what may come, come to pass. So if you got dark Samus, for example, on random, what would you do with Dark Samus? How, how, do, how do you play Dark Samus, my man? Are you a camper? You play aggressively? What do you do? Uh, I I have no strategy with Smash. <laughs> I just kind of get in the fray, and I I, I don't win a lot. <laughs> so that's that's my answer. No, I know. We got to play sometime. But I'm thinking of, like, what changes we would make to Dark Samus then. I mean, I feel like Samus, so, Samus 2, I think, would be great for, Sam for changes because she hasn't really changed too much either. Yeah, and, and I, so I, I pitched a new moveset for Dark Samus, but I didn't for Samus because I, I feel like her moves are like still, you know, they're still somewhat representative of her, like the charge beam, the missile, the screw attack, the bombs. Like that's that's some pretty classic Metroid stuff, but I, I definitely wouldn't see her, or I wouldn't mind seeing her like with an updated moveset. But mm -hmm. I do have some moves to pitch you for Dark Samus here. So if Dark Samus was an original character, not an Echo Fighter, and I'm not going to focus on her, on her like regular smash attacks, just her like special attacks, because that's all I really know and stuff. Um, 
I I was I was thinking it could be something cool like this. So like maybe her up special is is kind of like you know that rush move that she does in Echoes where she just rushes right at you like really top speed. You could never avoid it. I was thinking that that would be pretty cool. It could also kind of double as a recovery move, obviously. Um, side side B, I always call them B because I'm so used to the GameCube controller. Um, her side B or side no, special. I mean, I'm with you. There. I was thinking side it'd be B. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's just call them Bs. Yeah. It's so a B move. side B. She she splits into like two because you know how she always does that in a game. She does that cool like motion or whatever. Now she splits into two. Right kick, left kick, boom. That's like a double. It's a double kick and it looks pretty cool. She does a cool acrobatic. Flips back into the center and and merges back. Um, down B, I was thinking, you know how Sonic does that attack where like he gets into the ball form and like kind of rushes at you. I thought it'd be which cool one? If, like, well, yeah, <laughs> I like thought it'd be cool special. if Dark Samus kind of ripped that off and like you when you did down B, you could charge up and then you just like boost at at an opponent really fast. Because I remember when I was playing Echoes for our definitive ranking, uh, she did that to me more than a handful of times. Neutral B. I was thinking could be something like, you know, at the end of Echoes when she gets that that orb around her and spits off all of the different the little phase on particles that Samus has to collect with her gun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was thinking like you could just charge that up and then like, poof, all of your phase on particles go and smash everyone around you. And then final smash. Here's where I'm. Here's where I'm hitting my home run. I say, in, so it'll be much <laughs> like the Ganondorf final smash, but instead of Beast Ganon metroid prime bring that baby out let's see metroid prime just maul over anybody in a straight line what would you say to that yeah anything well, I mean, you change i mean well that you gave me like five moves there so i don't even i don't remember the first couple but um i mean the final smash would be really cool i don't really like it ultimate how they kind of like homogenized all of the alt like all the final smashes uh, like they're kind of just like a one touch and then there's a cinematic yeah. and you know i liked it in brawl yeah. and then um ultimate a little I guess. bit more interactive yeah like you know like um wario man was like you could run around with him and move now he's just like a cinematic all those kind of characters some of the cinematic or non cinematic yeah, yeah yeah exactly like landmaster stuff like that though i'm not sh- that might still be around i don't remember um so like yeah the dark samus that'd be really cool it'd be awesome if like you could have like an interactive like Metroid Prime, you play as Metroid Prime and like land on the stage and do a couple things, like kind of like Giga Bowser or oh, something like, like that. Oh, like Game and Watch or something. Or Game or, and yeah, Watch. yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. yeah, like the Game and Watch Octopus. That's how I would. I think that would be really cool. I'd love to control. Okay, yeah, that'd be sick. Metroid yeah. Prime. Um, the other ideas that would be cool. I, this, I feel like Dark Samus. Like Samus should be not as floaty, and the Dark Samus should really be the floatier of the two. She is still floaty, but they're both pretty much the same. I would assume she'd have like her shrapnel beam. That'd be really sick. She could kind of even have it like a Mega Man style where she can move and use it at the same time. Um, maybe she'd have the active camo, you know, she can kind of go invisible and you'd have to like, you wouldn't be able to see her because you don't have the right visor and smash. <laughs> um, that'd be really sick. That'd be annoying though. I feel like we're yeah. pitching very OP characters here, but I feel like <laughs> she'd be great to like, yeah, she'd maybe have like a decoy that could work like um, Zelda's Phantom Knight and maybe have that as like, she could send that out and it could take a hit for her. That'd be cool. Uh, maybe create like a phase and force field, something like maybe kind of like, you know how um, Palutena is up smash. She has that, like the big beam that just goes up into the sky. Maybe yeah, like dark yeah. Samus could have like something like that where like, she's like, just puts this big force field up that kind of just gets sent up into the sky. It's like really good coverage. Maybe it's just really laggy or something. Like I'd love to see her use more phase in like, um, Attacks that weren't as aren't as linear because Samus's you know all of her attacks are linear you know her missiles or charge beam I mean her morph ball bombs she just lays there but otherwise like she kind of you know even her her Zare right like when she can use her um, grapple beam in the air using the Z attack so like that kind of stuff she she has a very linear approach I'd love to see from, like Dark Samus like more stuff that she like maybe shoots up into the air or arcs or something and isn't as like a linear attack style so that Samus and Dark Samus feel a little different. Yeah, yeah, I, I I totally agree with you. I, I think that that would be just like it, little things to separate Dark Samus and Samus because Samus Dark Samus is a very vastly different character in the games. So I, I think that that would be pretty cool um, to have an interactive Metroid Prime is awesome. I love that idea. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, so I was so everybody says and and I'm sure that they're probably right that if there's ever going to be another Metroid character that's added to Smash, it's probably going to be Silex. That this is probably accurate. 
try as I may, I just like I can't think of anything cool for Silex to do in Smash. So I was I was wondering oh. if you had any better luck than I did. Silex is so so like obviously every new character that they add has like a gimmick at this point. So Silex's gimmick would very easily be the uh, electric bombs that he sets. So if you remember from Metroid Prime Hunters, when he goes into his alternate form, the Lockjaw, mm-hmm. he can set around these these electric bombs. If he sets two of them, it creates a trip wire. And if I remember correctly, it like deals damage. I think it might stun you, or maybe it just deals damage. I don't remember. In Smash, it'd be cool. You you could set two, and then the trip wire. If it gets touched, you know it'll deal damage or stun or whatever. You could follow up, or or it'll give you some stage control. But then if he sets a third one down, it automatically sets all three of them off, even if the the uh, trip wire hasn't been touched. So like that right there, like Silux would be such a cool character because he'd be like have so much utility based off of the trip wires and the electric bombs. He'd be able to set up combo off of them, set them off on at his own like or create like traps with them, put them in the ledge if someone's trying to recover, get up from the you know get up from the ledge or get out of the corner. Uh, he yeah. could put it where someone's gonna land. He could use it as coverage when he's trying to get up. And then obviously if he can control it manually, like that would be so good. That would a hundred percent be his gimmick. And he'd be able to like put those down. That would be like his morph ball bomb. But it would be way more like way more effective than like Samus's. That would be some crazy utility. I would assume that would be his main gimmick. See, I, I kinda thought um that and obviously I'm not as familiar with Hunters as you are. I've only played it like once I think I played it twice. But so I kinda thought it would be cool if like his gimmick was you could almost switch between all the different weapons and stuff. Like I know that the with the shock coil is his main weapon in that game, but I'd be like, yo, that'd be so cool if you got to use like like Weevil's weapon or, or any hmm. of the other guys' weapons and just kind of, like kind of switch like it almost like um almost like Baylith switches between uh, the weapons and Bi- his character moveset. Baylith. Or Bi- <laughs> yeah, sorry, Baylith. Baylith. That, God, I I play God, I played like two hundred hours of that game. You think I'd get that right? Um, but yeah, so like something switching moves like that, or like maybe, maybe even like switching moves kind of like Shulk does, like he can switch to the different arts and stuff like that. I, I don't know. I, I thought that that would be cool. Um, but I, I think it would be more likely if Sil if, if Silex was to ever get into smash, it would probably be, you know, his moveset would probably be based around whatever he happens to be doing in Metroid Prime four or Metroid five or whatever next, whatever is the next game that, that he shows up in. I did think it would be cool if like, for right now, they worked in like the baby Metroid that he or the Metroid A he stole into his final smash. I don't know how. I just I wasn't feeling creative with Silex, but I, I think that that would be like a cool little Easter egg for those who got it. I, know, I feel like the Metroid with Silex wouldn't make any sense because like he doesn't he's not really associated with Metroids. I mean he's like stealing them, but I don't know that'd be kind of weird. I think I mean I definitely agree the Shock Coil would be great, and you got to integrate that into his his like move set. Like you could maybe have it where you know Metroid Prime Hunters. It's an attack where the more you use it on an enemy, the more damage it deals. So, like, it could be a move where, like, he sends it out and, like, it could be an active move. And the more hits he gets on someone in a period of time, the more damage it deals. It could be a character that really snowballs on someone else, deals a bunch of damage and knockback by stringing together shock coil hits, creates stage control, and then uses that time and stage control they established to set up electric bombs and set up traps and then reset the, the gameplay. That would be a character that would be really hard to fight against. Um, I, I think he, it would be cool if he just stuck to using the shock coil. I don't really like characters that cycle between all the weapons because then they don't really feel like a character in and of themselves. Like, I don't really like Shulk. Um, but even then, like, those all come from the same game and those are pretty similar. But, like, I think it'd be cool if he just stuck to his character. Like, Silex has enough details of his own to, like, just make his own character. He has the electric bombs. He has the shock coil. He has the lock jaw. Like he's his own character. He doesn't need to be using other people's weapons and, and have a Metroid. Like he has more than enough details on his own, even just for Metroid prime hunters. So I would love to see a very like faithful representation to how he appears in hunters, which I assume is how he's really going to appear in prime four or whatever. Cause I think he has a lot to offer. So I think he'd be a really, really cool character. If you're a fan of someone like snake, um, you'd probably feel right at home item based characters like mm-hmm. that and then trap characters characters that really control the you know flow of the game using traps and projectiles and then also you know can snowball as well i think it'd be really fun i would i based on that have you had all those things yet from hunters think it'd be really cool um you know, and you know i was gonna say too like his his character design is like just so cool that like seeing that just in in high res and smash man that would be cool because like 
we've mm-hmm. seen character renders. We've seen him in in Hunters, which is 15 years old at this point. We've seen he still looks cool from that though. Like even his design he, he from does, Hunters, he, he, he looks, looks cool. awesome. It would just it would just be cool to see him in like you know, like a game with such polish like Smash. You know I agree. I mean? Yeah, he would look awesome in Smash. They'd really do him justice. That's the thing too is that when you get into Smash, like they really like put yeah. like everything into like making them look really awesome and looking really like not necessarily like true to form, but like they take sometimes like the best of their appearances and all that. And obviously like Silex hasn't appeared a lot. So I think they'd really take some cool, like creative liberties, but still stay true to the character. And Silex really isn't a very complex design either. So I think it would look really cool. Yeah, I agree. Um, all right. Well, since I didn't have very much to pitch for Silex, I wanted to make it up to you deck by creating a pitch for one of my favorites, my man, Craid. What if Craid came into Smash? And before anybody says it, he's too I don't big. Care if he's too big, he's I don't too care big. If he's too big. We got Bowser in Smash. We got King K. Rule in Smash. Too big, man. We could get Craid in Smash. By God, at one point Ridley was too big. Hey, man. Um, but no. So, so I imagine, I imagine that Craid would very similarly mirror someone like King K. Rule or, or King DDD, just in terms of like yeah. movement and and whatnot, uh, which I think is obvious, but. Uh, I kind of, I was kind of reaching for these ones here, but uh, bear here we go. So I, I think it would be cool for his up B and his recovery move. This one was the <laughs> his recovery because, like... move. I can't even imagine <laughs> Kraid. How would he recover, bro? How would gravity okay, so... allow him to recover? So hear me out. Actually, I'll, I'm gonna bundle his neutral B into his into his up B here because they're kind of the same thing. But you know how in Super Metroid when you're fighting him. He shoots out those spikes from his belly, yep, and belly on some of those spikes, you can actually they they are platforms, and you can climb on them. Now, my his neutral B is he's just gonna shoot a spike at you. He's gonna charge it up. It's gonna get bigger. Spike is gonna get bigger. It's gonna go further, and he's gonna he's gonna fire that sucker out, and it's gonna it's gonna come right for Samus or whoever happens to be in the way. But if our boy Kraid is knocked off the edge. What he has to do is he has to press up B and then he's going to get on one of those those spike platforms. He's just going to kind of grab it and that spike platform is going to shoot from his belly. He's going to grab the end of it and it's going to launch him upwards and it's going to get him back on the stage. <laughs> now, <laughs> wow. Dude, That's... I don't I don't even know. I can't even I'm having a hard time picturing that. I... So it's almost <laughs> like he's riding a surfboard, but the surfboard is a projectile that literally just emerged from his belly. Okay, so he's like rocket jumping with his own like belly spike or something. I don't even. You you could say that. Yeah. I would. I honestly think if Craig gets knocked off the stage, he's dead. He can't recover. <laughs> he doesn't have a recovery move. He's just dead. If you got, if you are able to knock him off. Then that's a feat in and of himself. Uh, in and of itself, I could see Kraid being you know like, what? yeah, something like that. I could accept that actually. I, I think that that's fairly valid. If they just made him like so, so, so heavy that if you were able, like almost like a steel DDD or something like that, like that's just his regular weight. I, okay. You know, I how about this? How about his... this? Okay. How about this? How about this? He, he's when he's knocked off stage, is up B. He like sheds all of his skin and flesh, so he's just bone. He loses all the weight, and then he extends his bones and throws them like a lasso to, like, you know how, like, Crocomire, when he falls into the lava or whatever? And he's like... Oh, God. That's that's so morbid. Yeah, well, I mean, how else are you going to get back? And then, he I don't know, he regrows his bones and flesh. Or so. I don't know. Like, I'm, I don't even, like... I can't picture Kraid recovering. Like, Kraid is just a big blob monster in a room, and you kill it, and it falls to the ground. It doesn't go up. Kraid doesn't go up. So, I, I don't know how he would do it. Maybe he would... Yeah, maybe. Okay, what about this? What if it's just a straight up... I mean, I guess this is... Yeah. Like, he just turns around and maybe just the blast from the belly spike could propel him. You know? Yeah, okay. That that can work, too. It, I don't know what's more ridiculous, that <laughs> or the surfboard idea I had. I You know what? I actually true. like your idea that, like, he doesn't even have a recovery move. He's kind of just, like... <laughs> he just dies. Not exactly like Yoshi, but, like, Yoshi doesn't have a recovery move. He just has, like, yeah, one exactly. big jump. Yeah, Yeah. I actually, I could, I could accept that. I, I like that idea. I think I did a little bit better with his other moves, though. That, I, that, that one was kind of spotty. I have to admit. Um, side B, I thought it would be cool since like Kraid doesn't have a ton of moves. 
in in game other than just like kind of roaring at you i thought it would be cool if you kind of paid homage to green brinstar and super metroid and maybe he just like whips out our boy uh, spore spawn at an enemy and spore spawn recoils back into like Crate's oh. belly or mouth or something like that. You love these just summoner like characters. A nice little... <laughs> you love just spawning yeah. someone to fight for you. Do you. Are you not a Zelda main? Are you sure? No okay, well, well, here I go too. Down B. Are you? You're familiar with Bowser Junior's uh, Down B move where yeah. he summons a little Koopaling. Don't remind so me. So I propose. I propose that Crate summons. You know how in the game there's like the mini Crate right before the boss room. I propose okay. that he summons up a little mini crate that marches and does Ooh. kind of the same gimmick as, as yeah, Bowser Yeah, that's good. I like that. I 100% agree. That's a really good okay, move. Okay, okay. I like that. What, one out of four ain't bad. I would say the side B, though, I would replace that. Doesn't remember, like, in Zero Mission? I mean, I think he does. He might do another stuff, but I know in Zero Mission how he, like, throws his nails, you know? When he, like, swipes and whatnot, like, his nails, like, kind of fly at you and you shoot them for like energy balls and, and and missile like drops maybe that could be it like maybe he would throw a claw throw like something like kind of like king k rules uh crown orang where he kind of throws the crown and comes back maybe he would have these boomerang nails he throws at you or something that would make him good uh, okay i don't know i i could live with that i, c- I kind of like my boy spore spawn i'm just not i'm could, not a I big fan of characters summoning characters that they have no relation to you know like it would be random. Like wouldn't Spore like Spore Spawn's not his friend. They have their neighbors. They're not really neighbors. It's like a, a Spore Spawn would probably eat Crate if it had the chance. Oh, Crate would eat Spore Spawn. Okay, th- further my point exactly. Crate would eat Spore Spawn. There you go. I don't think they're on the same team, man. I think they're all they're all remember, heels don't work together. Heels hate other heels. Come on, you know this. This is res- wrestling one oh one. Come on, man. D- Dungeon of Doom. <laughs> Baby, Dungeon of Doom. Okay, I, I, oh, honestly, yeah, Dungeon I didn't really of have Doom much for his final the, smash. Set in the bar high, yeah. <laughs> set out the Yeti. Uh, I didn't have much for his final smash. I literally just wrote down Cradezilla. Oh. And maybe he just maybe just hulks up and, and goes Bro. like bananas on everybody. Meta, Metacrade. You, you bring Metacrade out and you have him be Metacrade or something. Like You have a cutscene where... Okay, here we go. So the final smash is like... Okay, okay, boom, perfect. Crate has a, you know how like Final Smash is currently in Ultimate is like you hit the B button and you, you know, you attack and if you hit them, it lands, right? What if yeah. Crate has a counter Final Smash where he hits B if, if he, so he gets hit, he gets hit by the attack, he dies in the cutscene, in the cutscene, the Space Pirates rebuild him as Meta Crate and then he comes back in the cutscene and kills the character that killed him and he kills him and does mad damage. That would be dope. That's how I would do it. That sounds like something Ridley should have. That sounds cool. That would Ridley, be cool. Yeah, that would be a sick... I agree, but if, if he's not going to get it... That, that's the thing, though, is because they just did, like, Ridley. Like, Meta Ridley is just a skin. I, well, I want to integrate Meta Crate into his character, just like they should have integrated Meta Ridley into his character. Imagine Ridley was built with Meta Ridley stuff. Imagine he had the lasers and the bombs and all that stuff. He'd be so good. Oh, my God. They really oh, yeah. need to do, like mecha crate in in prime four or something like that so that he can have a cool final smash yep Mm -hmm. uh all right um so that was all that i that i had for characters but actually i i came up with some ideas for stages too i have three ideas for stages that i wanted your opinion on and uh they're they're stages that i think like i i would just want to see them in smash not i don't necessarily think they'd be like great competitive stages or like you know, add, add anything super new. Hey, man, I like fun mix. stages. You know, I don't need a stage to be Battlefield. I like fun stages. But I, I would like more legal, potentially legal stages. But I like fun, cool stages that are silly sometimes. So my my first one, and just just because I want to hear like the Smashified music of it, but I was like, it seems like just insane to me that Fendrana Drifts is not a stage in Smash. Like that, it's such an iconic area. I want to hear the music remix of it. Um, it, it doesn't even have to have like a like a super big gimmick. It could just be like platforms with a beautiful background, and like obviously you could have the ice there that affects how you walk. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I just really I really want this stage just for the visuals, just for the music, and just because it's like such a you know such an iconic Metroid Prime area. It'd be cool. There's some really cool stuff they could do with it. Like obviously the music would be sick, but they could have. Um... 
like what are the scree bats like i forget i believe that's what they're called that fly around and yeah. whatnot um and maybe you could attack those or they hit you like the different you know the rock like uh like the rock towers that create like the platforms they use to jump around the main like lobby area of Fendrana Drifts and whatnot. Those could maybe be like destructibles or like things you could jump onto. Maybe like a big she goth attacks, you know? Oh, that would be cool. That would be sick. Yeah, like be maybe cool. there's a tra- you know it'd be really cool. If they were if it was like a you know how the Delfina Plaza Delfino Plaza stage like goes around the different like areas of Delfino Island, that stage? What if this one yeah. went to like the three different areas of Fendrana Drifts? It went to like the main Fendrana's oh, yeah, area, perfect. and then it went to Fendrana's Edge, and there's like the big bridge or like the the chasm, and there's like huge like ground in the you know, there's a huge hole in the ground, and then it goes to the Space Pirate Lab, and maybe you're fighting at like uh, the big tower, and there's like space pirates, like flying pirates shooting at you and whatnot, and then when you rotate back to the main Fendrana lobby area again, the first phase of the stage you come back and there's she goths in the ground and they come up and attack you just like how when you beat the area and you come back like she goths start spawning more and more around in the area that would be cool yeah that, that would be awesome you you sold me on that and that's what i mean like because delfino plaza is, is really it's almost just like a moving battlefield and it doesn't have any like gimmicks mm. but it looks awesome the, tra- right? the, like, the main the main portion hmm kind of so not not exactly like a but you know what i mean it's like a set series of platforms or whatever right um yeah i'd I'd totally love to see something like that for fendrana the more that we can get uh the better i think that would be so yeah i think that'd be so awesome my uh Uh, second okay yeah go on i'm sorry go ahead oh no no, go ahead i was gonna say my pick uh is always for people who know like i think i've said this on twitter before but my pick has always been the artifact temple I think that would be such a cool stage, not only for the music, but like the rain, the yes. moodiness. You know, you have like the glowing lights of like the the statues and whatnot, and it like would be so obvious. Like you could have, you know, the different statues all over the place that would be just you know, uh, destroyable. destroyable. Yeah, right. Like you knock them down and whatnot. It kind of be like uh, Luigi's Mansion, you know, that stage where you can knock all the different pillars down and then it crumbles. And then maybe towards the end, if you knock them all down, like the background of the stage, like attacks you with lasers, kind of like the Hellbird stage uh, from Brawl. That would be really cool. And then I think it would make a cool competitive stage just as a background as well if they didn't go as nuts. But I think it would be fun to have all those hazards. But I always wanted ha- the Artifact Temple. It's like one of my favorite locations in Metroid in general. And it just looks really sick. It has potential to add all this cool music. It would be a perfect stage for Ridley. Because that's like Meta Ridley stage essentially, and he doesn't really have yes. like I mean he kind of has a, he has Norfair, but like that was in Smash before he showed up, and Pyrosphere is not there. Even though that's not this is Ridley's, that's not you know his place, but it would be close enough. He doesn't really have his own stage. I think Artifact Temple would be a really good like throwback and like nod to Meta Ridley, and it would be a really cool like backdrop. It'd be sick, real rain effects. It'd be really cool music. That's always been my pick. Hmm. Yep. I'm I'm liking what I'm hearing. That's that's a great pick. That would oh man, that'd be so good. Mm-hmm. Just with all the the destroyable like, yeah. artifacts and stuff. Mm, yeah, that'd be good. And I'm a fan of like characters having kind of their own stage, like a signature stage. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah, Dark Ridley. Samus should have their own too. But yeah, Ridley could this Ah, one. Well, the, so here we go. Mm-hmm. My next pick for a stage is Dark Samus's stage. I think it would be awesome if they had the planet phase Ooh, as yeah. a stage and like you could into like the the setting would look so cool and again it probably doesn't need to be like anything too crazy in terms of like layout but you could have like tons of stage hazards with like phase on and stuff like that and like maybe there could be like different pits of it that you could get trapped into and if you step into it you're you're mobile or you just like take damage or like something you could really play around with phase on and have that be a stage hazard and like a bunch of different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that the the music was pretty cool, so I'd like to see that kind of smashified, if you will. But the the setting of it, I just think would like really lend itself well to Smash. It would be such a great stage for like Dark Samus to to really kind of you know plant her feet in. And yeah, I just think that there's so much play with all of the uh, with the phase on. It's really an endless kind of array of possibilities. Um, and, and like you don't really you didn't really get a whole lot of representation from metroid prime 2 and 3 in smash i don't think you got any representation at all actually so yeah uh that would be cool i 100 percent agree i think that'd be really cool and like metro prime 3 has so many weird looking locations like it would really stick out like in a good way it'd be really like a unique area 
Um, I'm trying to think. The only other two places that like really stick out to me that I really want, uh, Sanctuary Fortress, I think is a pretty obvious yes. pick. You know, for the music, for the look, it would look absolutely amazing. And then my the other pick I've always wanted, and I don't know how great of a stage it would make, but one of my favorite just like backgrounds and backdrops of all time is the ending of Metroid Fusion, where they're you know where you fight the Omega Metroid, and you have like the the hangar there and the ship in the back that lo- shows up in space and whatnot. I just that just uh, such one of my favorite video game fights of all time, and like it's a nostalgic and iconic moment. So for me, like. I would love like some stage, like a throwback to that. Like maybe the BSL would be kind of cool. Maybe like the Omega Metroid shows up, some X parasites show up. Maybe you can call in the ship. I don't know. I've always just, I love that like backdrop at the very least just to play on it in like an FD form or a battlefield form would be really cool. And it could bring in some cool fusion music as well. Yeah. I, I think that that's the, that's the ticket right there is like have the BSL be the stage mm-hmm. and like you're, you're on like a somewhat, you know, you're on like a battlefield or like something like that. But you you're moving and you can go from like sector to sector and you can visit all six sector sectors and then mm-hmm. like the main like the hangar and stuff like that. I think that that's a stage where like the background would really make it, um, and, and that'd be cool too because like I feel like I feel like no one area in Fusion to me is probably like Smash stage material, but like all together. I feel like that'd be a really cool stage that kind of takes you from one place to the next to the next to the next. I agree. That would be really exciting. And like the like you said, like the opportunity to have some of that fusion uh, music like remade and redone and smashified would be very cool. I 100% agree. And I yeah, I think that's a cool idea to bring like I love stages like that that I mean, Delfino Plaza is one of my favorite stages. The only reason it's not legal is cuz the blast zones are super bad and way too close to the stage, so it's like crappy to play on. But and it was better in Brawl. But I love the concept of the stage. I love stages that bring you around and show you the sights. And that'd be really cool for this stage. However, that being said, there is one place on the BSL that I think would be perfect for its own individual place as a stage. And that's the the Ceres boss room where you're standing on those small platforms and there's water and whatnot. I think that can make a really cool like stage out of that. And with the music, I think the Saris boss theme would be so sick on that stage, but like you have Saris jumping through the water and there's just platforms and whatnot. And you could swim or you could jump around on top and survive as the monsters jumping around or, you know, flying at you, swimming around at you. I think that'd make for a really cool stage. I thought that you were going to go restricted zone actually, when you, when you Ooh, started that. Okay. That'd also be cool. That'd be too. cool too. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I, I think that you can integrate that into the BSL as well. Yeah, but yeah, so I have a question for you. Do you like scrolling stages? Hmm. I mean, I feel like almost nobody does. Uh, no, <laughs> no, I don't. I mean, scrolling All stages right. are almost always annoying because you can just get caught on stuff and like left behind. I think the only scrolling stage that I like is Icicle Mountain, the ice climber stage from Melee. Yeah, yeah that, that stage that's rocks. that's the only scrolling stage I think I like. OK, so I've got a pitch for you. For a Metroid stage. I know where you're going with stage. this. Yeah, but keep going. Okay, okay. My pitch is the planet SR388, and you are scrolling downwards. Oh, okay. So you're scrolling towards the center of the planet. And you can have, like, the usual stage hazards, like falling rocks, lava, stuff like that. But I think that the coolest stage hazards would be, and maybe they're not even stage hazards, but you can see them in the background. You scroll past... Alpha Metroids, and you scroll past Gamma Metroids, and you scroll Ooh, past Omega okay. Metroids, and at the bottom you can you can see like a queen, and maybe that queen is interactive, maybe it isn't, I don't know. Um, and at the end of that, once you finally get to the core, you can I don't know how you'd get there. Maybe it would just like literally just reset, kind of like the Fire Emblem stages do. Yeah. But you'd go back up to the top and you'd start scrolling again. I think it could be cool. It's unique for Metroid. We don't have a scrolling Metroid stage. The music options would be awesome. Like the the surface theme from from SR three eighty eight is one of my favorites. Um, just something different that we don't have in Metroid yet. And like I feel like you know the the scrolling stage gimmick makes sense in that because your your you know your main objective in Metroid two is literally just going down 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 into the center of the planet. So I know that scrolling stages aren't everybody's you know necessarily everybody's favorite, mm-hmm. but I think that this one could be kind of cool. That's not where I thought you were going. I actually like that idea more than what I was thinking. I'll tell you what I was thinking. But yeah, that's really <laughs> sick. I, I wasn't thinking about that. That would have been great to include in like Ultimate with like a new upgraded look for Samus. Yeah. But um, 
that would be cool. I would love something that really goes into showing off more Metroids because like I you know, so many we've talked about this over the past few weeks, you know, when we're talking about uh, Samus being in Fortnite because we've talked about the fact that some people might not even know what Metroid is. But I even think like some people that know what Metroid is don't even know a lot of like the lore stuff or like they probably don't even know that other Metroid forms exist. Right. Like they probably just play Smash and like might know Metroid from that, but they probably don't even know like what a Metroid Queen is or a Gamma Metroid or a Mega Metroid is. And that'd be really cool to incorporate that kind of stuff into the stages and show more of that stuff off. So I 100% agree. That That's not where I thought you were going. Where I thought you were going was to have like an escape sequence stage where maybe Samus has to escape like, you know, doing one of the end game runs towards her, you know, her ship. Okay, okay. I was thinking maybe she could, do, it would be a scrolling stage where they, it scrolls from the, actually instead of from the top of the stage in or planet in like you said going from the inside of the planet out and going all the way to the surface to criteria and then getting to her ship and like escaping and that would be the scroll and then it would reset somehow i think that would be a really cool metroid stage and you can kind of do the same thing maybe yeah. have metroids on the way but it would still i mean that's like you know an iconic part of metroid is the escape sequence and having a stage that's a scrolling escape sequence kind of like how they did it in the melee adventure mode if you remember that, but like instead of it just being like a, a single a single shaft, having it be you know have it more room and have it move you know a little more differently uh, to make it a little more dynamic, that would be cool. I would love to see that. Yeah, that, that's a that's a really cool idea actually. I I'm surprised that I didn't think of that either. But like that's such an obvious uh, that, that's such a great use of like scrolling stages. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, I I would be down with that. And like man, again, I keep on saying it, but like the music it would be would oh, be perfect. awesome. Like, yeah. Yeah, that would that would be really cool. Um, all right, so so that's that was all that I wanted to uh, to pitch for what I want to see in Metroid for Smash. So we got a few minutes here left, Dak, and like I said at the top of the show, I think it's like a guarantee that we are going to see a Smash character revealed. Yeah, E three. I agree. Do you want to do you want to put your guessing cap on and and guess a realistic guess of who? Let's just do the last two characters. Realistically speaking, who do you think the last two characters are? You've talked about Chief a lot. We've talked about Chief a lot. Uh, give us the lowdown. What do you think the chances are? Like, who do you think the last two characters are going to be? Well, I definitely want to say that obviously we're going to do our E3 prediction show just before the event. And I think we're even discussing doing, you know, audience listener uh, predictions as well and talking about it there. So we'll probably go into this more yeah. at that point. The sooner, we, you know, closer we get to E3. That being said, uh, I'm like, I mean, I don't want to get my hopes up, but at the same time, like I already have Ridley and K. Rule in the game and whatnot and Banjo. So like if, if he doesn't make it in, it's okay. But I'm really certain Master Chief's going to be in this game. I think so much stuff points to him being in the game. Uh, you know, it's, it's a laundry list. Microsoft already has two characters in Smash. So the likelihood of having a third, I think, is higher than another company getting more characters or one at all. Um Microsoft and Nintendo already have a really solid partnership outside of that. You already have but games that, you know, they potentially want to have Game Pass on the Switch is a rumor. You know, you have Halo Infinite coming out later this year. Uh, Halo or Master Chief is a human type character that they could easily make instead of being some other weird shaped character that would probably be harder to make in development wise. He's very popular, very highly requested at this point. And he's essentially Microsoft's Mario. So the fact that they, I mean, I would assume that they would want him in almost at all costs. I certainly would if I was Microsoft. I And obviously I'm a huge Halo fan. I think he'd be perfect for the games. I'm very, very, very sure that Master Chief is going to finish the fight. He's going to finish the fighter pack. I think we're going to get a third fighter pack. But I think he might be the last so one of yeah. this one. I think we're going to get a, a second character before him. Or, you know, a fourth character, you know, whatever. Like a character before him. And then he'll be the actual last one of this pass. And then we're probably going to get a third fighter pass, I would assume. Because Nintendo, as much as they don't want to make, you know, custom skins and other kind of stuff, they still know that the DLC definitely brings in a lot of stuff. It's a lot easier to add characters to this game than make a whole new game. You know, like, I think some people were talking about this on Twitter, at least in the Smash community. Not many people, but like, oh, not sure if there might be another fighter pass because, you know, Sakurai needs to take a break and whatnot. But I really don't think, like, the character development is as intensive, like as opposed to just starting a whole new game, which I'm sure they want to make another Smash game at some point. So I think they'll continue to make characters and milk this game as long as they can. I wouldn't be surprised if there's going to be a Fighter Pass 3. 
having Master Chief come out around the same time of the Halo 20th anniversary and Halo Infinite coming out and potentially, you know, other Microsoft related stuff happening with Nintendo later in the year, which has been rumored by multiple people in the industry. I think it makes a lot of sense that he's going to be in the game. So he's my definite pick. And obviously I want him in. I mean, Master Chief would be so sick. He'd bring in like oh, so many cool uh, weapons and, and stages and, and music, and he would be awesome. It, yeah, his move set, the stages, yeah. would be so awesome. He, he would be like it, DLC to, Snake. He'd be so sick. To, to build on what you said, I, I agree, actually. So I, I I was calling, it was funny, because uh, I think we were talking about this, you know, Mega Metro Discord the other day, but, like, there's a moment in time where, like, when Cloud Strife was announced, that was so shocking to me, because... In my mind, that was like the PlayStation version, or as close as PlayStation has to a version of Mario. Like, some people can say Crash or whatever, but like, to me, like, the game that really put PlayStation on the map was Final Fantasy VII, and Cloud was like the main guy. So, like, that was so shocking to me that Cloud was in there. And I was mm -hmm. like, the next biggest name that they could get is Master Chief, because that's like the Xbox Mario. And exactly. Like, I think that it does make sense for all the reasons that you said. Um, so, I, I just feel like Smash has evolved to like this. Hall of Fame, almost, of video game characters. So, I mean, I, they I got know. Banjo I, I in this back game, and forth. you know? Like, Banjo yeah. is not even, like, that's like an old retro character that is essentially in this game solely because people just wanted him in the game. You don't think Microsoft wants well, Master it, it, Chief Banjo, in it? Banjo is, is a Nintendo favorite, too. No, yeah, like, true, but he's not, know, like, an active IP right now. Like, he's in because no, he's a fan... No. That's like a, that's a fan pick right there. He's in for that reason. Master yeah. Chief yeah. is arguably a way more popular character than Banjo. It's an active IP or an active character, an active IP, etc. Like if Banjo got in this game, and he hasn't like he hasn't had a game in forever, you know, I, I feel like there's no way Microsoft passes on the opportunity to have, as you said, their Mario in this game. So I I kind of went back and forth, and I think you maybe convinced me otherwise, but I was just like. Man, I don't know. They've already got two Microsoft characters in. Would they really want a third, or would they try and go after like a Sony character or something like that? Yeah. But I'm thinking to myself, like, like Sony has a lot of like, like kind of like B plus characters, like Kratos and, and Alloy. No, I don't and, know if Kratos and, is uh, B plus now. Kratos is A for Sony. Kratos is a hundred percent A. Man. Okay. How about how about this? How about this? They have a lot of like. Uh, I don't know. I, I yeah. I, I think I'm gonna stick with B plus. And maybe Kratos is A. People can argue me with that. But like, to me, like Kratos is not on the same level as Master Chief. Mm. Like he's not on the same level as Link. He's not on the same level as Mario. Like, and no one at PlayStation mm. is. Like, no. You know what I mean? Like, I, I guess nobody not. Is, but is a on lot of level. people know who Kratos is, though. But that's also because he's kind of like a mythological character. So I don't know if that's the. It's not. A, it's not. I wouldn't say it's. A, but go on. I'm sorry. Yeah. I I, I agree I, with I, you're saying. I just, and I just can't see that happening. Like, I, I, just, I just can't see Kratos showing up in Smash Bros. I could see maybe Crash, but, like, if Crash it were cool. to me, it's just like, man, would I rather Crash. have Crash or would I rather have Master Chief? And so I think you kind of convinced me. It's like, all right, well, I'd rather have Master Chief, obviously. Like, that's one of the biggest well, names left not in yeah. Smash Bros. So Well, even, yeah, even think I, of I think it this way, too. Like, do you really think Microsoft is going to let Capcom and Konami have more representation in Smash than them? Like, no, there's like Capcom has three characters in Smash. Konami has three characters in Smash, I believe. Um, or like, I yeah. So like that's two Castlevania characters in Snake. Yeah. And then yeah, that, that's great. And then yeah. Capcom has Mega Man and, and Street Fighter Mega characters. Mega Man, Ryu and Ken. Yeah. So yeah. there you go. You, you telling me that Microsoft can't get three characters in the game? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. If, like, and that goes back to what I was saying earlier, is that I think it's way easier. Once you have that connection, once you're onboarded into the Smash process, I think it's easier to get more characters in, you know, rather than being a completely new company who has never had a character in Smash before, who might not have that same working relationship with Sakurai, the development team, or Nintendo, or whoever, as opposed to Microsoft, who already has Minecraft Steve, who literally already has Minecraft, which is like the biggest IP you could probably get in Smash right now other than Fortnite, right? It is the biggest thing, you know. So if they made that happen, it's probably so easy for them to add like two or three or four or five more Microsoft characters, you know, because they already have that working relationship and Microsoft can make those plays and I'm sure Nintendo would want to play ball too. And I think those rumors like Game Pass coming to Switch or whatever might be ringing true at some point, but 
yeah, I, I just can't see them passing up on the opportunity to get Master Chief into a game like that. And, and the thing is too, like you don't want you don't think Microsoft want, doesn't want Master Chief like alongside Mario and, and Ryu and Cloud and all these big Pac Man and Minecraft Steve standing in those those big A player Smash lobbies and whatnot. Of every every company wants that. Microsoft 100% wants that for Halo. Yeah. Um, so, so I think, okay, so we're both on board with that. Yeah, we're, he's in. Let's move on and, and let's talk about Who's the, the other, other one. Who's the other one? The other one. So I'm, I'm trying to think here really quick, and I, and I can't think of any, like, Nintendo games that really you make can't think sense of any? put another character in. You can't think of one. Uh, it starts with M and ends uh, with Troid Prime 4. Well, okay. I can't think of any that I think are likely. Let's. You know what? You, you know what? I actually, likely? I could see. No, I, I don't think that's likely. Really? I, I, I honestly no. think Silex. I don't. I think Silex actually has a decent chance. I could see them putting in well, Silex into okay, Smash. Okay, so put this into perspective, though. So, like, we're pretty sure that this character is going to be announced at E3 in yeah. like less than a month, right? Like, mm-hmm. I, I just don't see that being Silex. And if that's we're fair. saying that Master Chief is going to finish off the pack. Uh, which maybe they'll do two at E3, maybe they won't, but I, I feel like maybe they will. Mm-hmm. I just don't see that happening. What I could see happening, maybe, which is a long shot, is when they reveal Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 at E3, I could maybe see it, a new character from that game going into Smash, but I hope not. I think, I, I think I'm going to play it safe and say like where there's smoke, there's fire. Um, Ryu Hayabusa makes a lot of sense to me. And, and I feel like that's been the rumor name for a while. Yeah. But like, it, it really seems to fit. You know, he's exactly the type of, like, legacy character from a legacy series that Smash really gravitates towards. He's a cool-looking character. His, his moveset, you know, his, his his character would lend itself well to Smash moveset. Um, yep. I, I think that that makes a lot of sense. And that is something that I could see happening in, you know... 25 days or whatever it is i agree i mean i'm pretty sure the ninja gaiden collection is coming to the switch so it makes sense yeah. um yeah i think ryu by is a pretty a pretty safe pick a pretty likely pick a popular pick not as popular as some other characters but definitely has some solid support uh makes sense in terms of the company in terms of the character would be work great for smash wouldn't be too much development work i would think because it's again like a human shaped character and yeah, I think timing wise would be cool too. I definitely agree. I think Ryu Hayabusa has a really solid chance. I think there's even you know been like in leaks and rumors his name has come up before. So the the uh, developer or the head producer, um, maybe the president, I'm not sure. Someone at Koei Temko was just like he's not coming in, which is almost as as much of a you know as much of a uh, signal saying like we're trying to to misdirect people um, <laughs> as you can get. Yeah, and like they, I mean. Uh, Koei Temko just just did Age of Calamity. They just did Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition. Like that relationship, I feel like is pretty good. So yeah, if Ryu is not the most exciting. You never pick, say but I feel never, like it makes man. Like because you can't you can't trust developers until the game comes out because they'll say whatever. You know, they'll say yeah, the truth yeah. or they'll say not the truth to mislead you or they'll say what might be true at one point and then something becomes untrue later in development or whatever. So like. How many times has Sakurai said this is not possible? Then it happens. It's not possible. Then it happens. Ridley's too big. He gets in, etc. You know, like there's hundred yeah. percent. I would never. I never ever take a developer's word for anything they say until the game is actually out because that's when it actually matters. And I think Ryo Hayabusa. And him him saying that chance. it was a not likely makes me think it's more likely. You know, <laughs> like that the fact that he had to come out and say like no, this isn't going to happen makes me think there's a decent chance that it might happen. Yeah. So I, I could see that definitely happening. And Ryu Hayabusa would be a good character to, like, open E3 with. I don't think anyone would be, like, particularly offended if Ryu was in the game. That's, that's like, kind of a cool character. It's cool ninja. I think I think everybody, for the most part, likes ninja I, it wouldn't Gaiden, be, like so. It wouldn't melt the internet, but it would be cool. No. You know, it wouldn't be Minecraft It wouldn't melt the internet, breaking but it wouldn't, it wouldn't set anyone off either. It would be, yeah, it wouldn't so. be a Byleth or a Minmin. You're right, yeah. Yeah. Well, we no, will I see. Agree. And, uh... Yeah, we will. We'll be back uh, full in depth doing some E three predictions. We just kind Soon. of need a sneak peek at some so of them close. right there. Yeah, so close. Yes, um, but yeah, I had a lot. I had a good time talking Smash and Metroid. Yes, sir. And uh, I can't wait. I can't wait for E three, man. I can't wait. For uh, E3. It's so close. So we're excited. actually gonna get. I think we're actually gonna get Metroid news. I, I, I'm saying it. We're getting Metroid news. I can't wait. 
There we go. There we go. All right. Well, that is going to do it for this episode. Uh, of course, we're going to be back next week. We want to thank everybody for tuning in and making us a part of your Tuesday. Uh, make sure that you head on over to Podbean, iTunes, Spotify. You know the drill wherever you get your podcast. Go like and subscribe. Leave us that sweet five-star review if you think we have earned it. And uh, check us out over on Twitter. I am at Spateri316. Dak is at DakCity underscore. And we are at Omega Metroid Pod. And of course, join our Discord. We have a cool community of Metroid fans in there. And uh, it's a good place to hang. So come and, uh, come and hang out with us. Uh, until then, everybody, have a good week. And we'll see you back here next week. Take care.